It's a new adventure. Alright. And... Given the problems that we're still having with figuring out how to manage food and how long that we can we can last without supplies and things like that, let's do Space Drill one more time. And uh, I really am enjoying Emmett because Emmett is giving us a constant supply of uh, resources. But what do you guys think, Didi or Emmett? Uh, Didi seems to allow us to go longer between periods of eating. At least that's how it seemed yesterday when we tried Didi. Uh, we were overtaken by space commies, Wolverine. We were overtaken. Our pod was the founding of Cosmograd. So we think, damn it, huh? We could do that. Epic Super Awesome, thank you for the follow. Wow, I'm picking up a whole lot of the sounds. So many of the sounds. Killa Casey, thank you for the follow. Very much appreciate it. Glad that you're here. We're going to do some more of this. So I guess, you know, let's get started. So what do you guys think? Emmett, right? Yeah, let's do Emmett. And let's see if we can get two people. I think it might be a good idea to get um, Baby. Baby is like a good counterpart for Emmett because Baby is like all strength. Wow, I'm picking up double sounds from the stream labels. I don't know what's entirely going on there, guys. I'll see if we can if we can figure out what's got it doubling up like that, or maybe it's it's just more people. Uh, Jedi, thanks for the follow. Appreciate you coming out, watching, participating, helping us out. Emmett, we're at Icarus 13. You know, just never trust a space station that's called Icarus. All right, well, we're going to leave Tom Thompson. Tom Thompson's not going to be our guy. All right, there's a roll of duct tape in here. We'll remember that. There's a fair amount of soup in here. That's actually a good room to raid. Uh, let's do the sneaky thing here. Do, 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 do. You're not watching me totally just move this right down there so it's easy for me to get to later. Not at all. Do, do, do. Sure, we'll be back for that in a minute. <laughs> Good enough, right? Maybe this is a little cheaty, but you know what? Let's try it. We haven't actually successfully done this. We started to do it last time and ran too many things into walls. So if we can get some of that stuff right there, I am willing to try it out. Whoops. God, I love how he runs. The art in this is so good. The animation is hilarious. And he's all sweaty right now, too. Look at him. Look at that guy. It's hard to get more nervous than Emmett right now. Yes, the cheese is super strong right now. I actually don't care. <laughs> I'm fine with the cheese, you gotta understand. It's all good. It's all good. Give me the give me the battery. This is just, you know, what kind of messed up space station is this, by the way? This is like, this is the dirtiest friggin' place. There's like exploded chemicals right here on the floor because, you know, that's what you got. Whatever the hell these tubes are, not working so good. Uh, the robot's completely missing an arm at this point in time. What a nightmare. <laughs> All right, so what else do we got in here? We know that we're going to be back for the uh, medical kit, so that's fine. What do we got in here? Soup. We're going to grab this soup because it's kind of a hard-to-see soup. Maybe it's cheese soup. 
put him right there by baby. <laughs> yeah, see, that's what happened last time we got soup and stuff trapped. And we weren't able to get it out, so... Oh, well. We'll be able to get it along the way. Just toss that in there. All right, medical supplies. We know where the medical supplies are going to be. The medical supplies are up here. So we'll snag those. There's a handbook around here somewhere. Probably over in here. Okay. Look at all this soup. Look at all this soup. I mean, even if it's just together, that's fine, right? It doesn't all have to be out in the hall, although it certainly doesn't hurt. I remember watching, um, I think it was uh, Falcon, who at one point in time used a, uh, a, a cheat to lock the timer so he could put everything he wanted to inside. An optimal ending. He still lost that run. <laughs> so, as good as we're doing here, it's still no guarantee of success. Let's just move all this shit out of the way. <laughs> there we go. All right. So now we're going to need to find some crafting resources. What do you think? Should we, uh... Should we stick with Megan? I feel like Megan did us pretty good last time. I'm thinking like Megan and Baby, but I would be okay with, uh, like, Dee Dee and Baby, too. Totally built by the lowest builder. And then... Like... Seriously, just like... Not even maintained even a little bit. This soup is going to be hard to get out of here. All right. Find a crewmate. All right. So what do we guys think? We think Megan or do we think um, Dee Dee? Megan? All right. Let's do Megan. I agree. She did pretty good. And she's kind of further away. So that also works. <laughs> she says. What a crazy old little bat. Okay. Okay. Alert. Everything's coming in now. Let's come out here. We're going to grab a whole bunch of the food and stuff that's in here. Actually, the tape and some food, I think. I didn't even notice where the mask was. Uh, actually, we can grab the armor, too. And then a soup. Oh, the sock puppet's on the wall in there, so we need to go back in there in a second. Yet. We did all right. We did all right. Astro Citizen. Look at that slick haircut. Yep, cheese saves lives. You're not wrong, Epic Super Awesome. You're not wrong. So let's see how we did. We did we did all right. We got a fair amount of crafting supplies. Oh yeah. I mean, it would have been nice to get the gun. I think. When we got the lighter, we got 13 cans of soup. We got the guidebook, of course. We got the tape, we got the atomic battery, we got the armor. Not so bad. Oh, and we got our sock puppet and, of course, the first aid kit that we start with. Greetings, Astro Computerized Assistant reporting for duty. You must be Emmett, right? I'm pleased to announce that according to my data, you qualify to become the captain of this vessel. Welcome aboard the escape shuttle, Captain. 
On behalf of the Astro Citizen program, please accept our apologies for the minuscule inconvenience of being blown 60 parsecs away from Earth. Current goal, find a safe place to land and then try to contact the outside world. Please turn on the main computer for further instructions. It's located in the center of the shuttle. Follow the regular rationing crew, our protocol, and feed your crew. Command is yours, Captain. Hey, baby. Baby Bronco. What a guy. Former child star. All right, well, we're going to give another intelligence-based speech because Emmett is an intelligence-based carbon life form. The power is yours. Uh, well, there we go. A clever speech sounded like a great idea. Of course, it only works if the one who gives it is, well, witty enough. Your tongue suddenly stopped working and all you could er utter was, How about some fresh air? Let's open the airlock. If your intention was to distress or absolutely horrify your crew, then you've made it. They're visibly upset, and I think I registered someone talking about jumping out of the airlock. So... Yeah, nobody starts off loyal, that's for sure. Yikes. Uh, Captain, it's important to keep you and your crew well fed. So, again, we need to do some counting. I don't think we're going to rely on Baby Bronco. He probably counts like one, two, four, many. Uh, so we're going to have our resident uh, nerd who is still wearing goggles do it. So, yeah, we can't upgrade or build anything yet. It should be upgraded tomorrow. Today, it's having us count all the soup. And if we do it with somebody smart, it tends to give us a little bonus soup. So. So we'll see. Ah, there we go. 18 soups. We got 13. There's plus three from doing it. I think that's the difficulty mod uh, giving us three extra soups. And then we found two additional ones. Excellent. So we have 18 soups. That's six feedings. It's pretty much where we were last time with the 12 for the two people. So not some better. Not, not so much better. Hey, King Trash Panda. I'm sorry to hear that you're sick, but I'm glad that you're here hanging out with us in the escape pod. So let's see what's going on here. Captain, the crafting module in the back of the cabin's now active. It's pretty self-explanatory. This wonderful machine lets you create something from almost nothing. All you need is minerals, chemicals, or power. Okay, so if we look at our supplies, unfortunately, we missed the box of chemicals. But we did get a fair amount of minerals, which is fine. And we got a fair amount of power, which is also fine. Uh, I think we'll immediately start by making the artifact. We need our golden movie. He is our, uh, he's our mascot and our idol. Uh, I cannot upgrade the crafter immediately. I need 25 power for it and I only had 24. This turn I should have 26 and so I should be able to do it. Uh, Captain, I told you I started up the crafting system in the back of the shuttle. I thought it was simple enough to be operated by humans. Perhaps I was wrong. I can't say if it was your engineering skill or dumb luck, but we were able to craft a high quality item. So we've got the one that glows. Now, if we come back here and take a look, we should have 26 power. So now we can upgrade the crafting module. And that's the very first thing that we're gonna do is upgrade the crafting module. So we've got an upgraded movie. I think there may be three tiers of upgrades. We haven't seen anything that's better than a second tier yet. But there's three tiers for the upgrading in the crafting system, so I gotta imagine there's three here. Uh, Captain, thus far, I've kept the shuttle in artificial gravity, but we need to see how well you can adapt to zero gravity. Uh, the benefit of weightlessness is that you can store anything anywhere. The downside is it's harder to move around. Practice is mandatory. Who will we choose? Well, let's go with Megan this time. No, we didn't fail to save somebody. We performed triage in advance. Uh, four would be really hard to feed. We did the last one with two, and we lasted 63 days. Um, so doing this is kind of a compromise. Megan has um, a level. There's, there's, they're scored one, two, and three for their uh, their stats. She has a two in, athlete, in the uh, dexterity, and so does Emmett. He's a three intelligence, and he baby is a three strength. 
So uh, let's just have Megan do it. So we're trying out three. Just in case somebody dies, we've got a backup. We really can't do a whole lot on our own if one of our, our companions dies. So we're upgrading and Megan is doing the thing. Megan, please be a lot less klutzy than Emmett was last time when he destroyed three items. Oh no. No, 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 no. She destroyed three items. The same three items. You, klutz. You're both klutzes. Who is not going to be a klutz? I don't think anybody was a three dexterity. Maybe Dee Dee. Maybe Dee Dee was a three in, in the dexterity. I don't know. Uh, there's nothing to report, Captain. I just suggest that you... Hey, Captain, would you mind covering your mouth when you yawn? I thought you got a good night's sleep. Wait, could this be boredom? Yes, I've heard that you humans need excitement in your lives to function properly. How curious. Captain, you're sitting in a state-of-the-art space shuttle, drifting through the deep cosmos full of wonder and mystery. Can you at least pretend that you're having a good time? You might have said, you might have said, uh, Dee Dee. Dee Dee may indeed be three, so. I think it's just any time that they fail. I mean, I think it's a roll, and I expect that it's just weighted by whatever the stats are. So are we going to amuse ourselves by reading the handbook, or will we amuse ourselves with the sock puppet, you guys? What do you think? Both of these should keep us entertained. But one of these things is going to entertain us more than the others. Or we could say, you know what, neither one of those. And we could just risk not using it. Sock puppet? King Trash Panda says sock puppet. Wolverine says read a book. Epic says book. So far we're leaning in the direction of books. Let's have a couple more votes. And then we'll make the decision. I'll give you guys a second to do that while I hop back here and take a look. Yep, one more day. Alright, take a look. Alright, that's three for books. Sorry, Trashy. We're gonna read books. Four for books. Okay, that's a lot of books. Oh, Spencer! Alright, well, we will play with the Sock Puppet the very next chance we get to play with the Sock Puppet. Pretty much no matter what it's gonna be. So, day six here. What did we do? Yesterday started pretty slow, but you managed to turn around. Browsing your Astro Citizen handbook on the toilet, I, I mean in the airlock, you found a set of exercises and decided to try them out. You did jumping jacks all afternoon, how fun. More importantly, it was healthy and you feel much better now. Upgrade completed, crafting module level two. Well, unfortunately we're hungry, but if it says we feel better, I guess we feel a little bit better. So that's not so bad. All right, let's see what we got here. Your attention is required, Captain. This is the most abnormal. We're registering unknown transmissions, but I can't identify who is sending them. You guys, it's aliens. Let's have Emmett, our resident nerd, figure out what he can about the aliens. All right, now, so we've got some time here. We cannot upgrade anything. We don't have the resources, not enough power to do so. This would be so hard with Dee Dee because she does not accumulate resources over time the way that Emmett does. Emmett requ acquires two for each category every day. So there's always a little bit of something coming in. I can always make something going forward. I have to assume that she's only picking up stuff that they find, and that seems hard. So, yeah, I think it's probably time to repair, um, and I think I want to go ahead with repairing the tape. I know that all of the repairs are going to take chemicals, and chemicals mean food, but I want to repair the tape. Actually, repairing the tape is good, but what can we craft? Let's craft a mask. And the reason I say let's craft a mask instead of crafting the tape, or repairing the tape rather, is that we keep getting an event where it vents gas, and that gas can decrease our intelligence which is a problem for us as a high intelligence character. So, let's go ahead and look here. Emmett's gonna try and figure out the alien message and we're gonna see if we can make a mask. It'll take us two turns to do that.
Okay, so everybody's getting pretty hungry at this point in time. We need to seriously consider giving people delicious foods. So, Captain, you need to see this. I'm not easily excited, but we found alien transmissions, and I don't mean the communists. Last time he meant the communists. Uh, what's really interesting is this time the ETA is only T minus three. We had a thing where it was T minus five yesterday. So I think it has to do with who you pick there on how good you do. All right, so we're starving. Megan's starving. Baby is starving. It is their first day to starve. Uh, they could wait one more day or we could feed them. They do take a slight uh, penalty to their stats if they're starving. But not yet. Okay, so the, the robot wants us to play chess. Oh my gosh! You found a holographic chess set on board. You've never heard of holographic chess. It's like regular chess, but with a big round board and your pieces are holographic monsters. And because it doesn't use physical pieces, I can totally play you. You'll just have to input my moves. But just remember, I control the airflow to where you sleep at night. You'd better not cheat, is all I'm saying. Want to play a game? I mean, sure, let's use our super brilliance here and see if we can beat you at chess. I'm sure that'll go over great. Uh, crafting module is still busy. Tomorrow we'll have a mask. So, we'll eat tomorrow. We're not letting the Wookiee win if we can help it. We're going to try and outsmart the thing. It would be terrible if it just self-destructed because we won. Uh, since I don't want to rub it in your face that I defeated you at holographic chess, but ha, 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 why are you mad? How in the universe did you expect to beat me? The computer always wins. So planet or no planet, we're getting closer. ETA minus two. So in two turns, we'll find a new planet, maybe. Uh, it's a good time for us to consider feeding everybody. So we're going to do that. And let's take a look at what we can do. Let's let's repair the tape. Yeah, we could use the tape. So what's going on here? Captain, you neglected your oral hygiene and you haven't brushed your teeth in a while. So now you need to pull that nasty tooth before it gets worse. Don't worry. It's only going to hurt a little and there might be a complimentary sticker in it for you. As per protocol, the necessary tools were automatically dispensed. One piece of string and one bottle of anest anesthetic? It has an Astro Citizen logo and anesthetic written on it? Will you require an assistant for this surgery? Can we assist ourselves? It's just a piece of string, right? Can we get baby Bronco to just pull on the string? Is that what we should do? Just have a little of this an anesthetique and then have baby Bronco rip this infected tooth right out of our skull? That seems like that would be a harrowing experience, but it might be something that he's adept at. He did make a perfectly legal move, and there is no use in crying about it. Well, you know, we brought baby Bronco for a reason. Let's see if baby Bronco can help us out with our dental problems. Baby's gonna kill us? I mean, he's just gotta pull on a piece of string and he's just our assistant. We'll be okay, right, Epic? I guess we'll find out. It was such a promising start to the run, too. Um, so we'll come over here and we're gonna make sure food, food, and food. Baby's gonna help us and we're gonna make, and we're gonna repair our roll of tape. So, here we go. Day nine. Uh, you took it like a champ, but terrified and disgusted baby went into shock and insisted on drinking the whole bottle of anesthetic to calm down his nerves. Baby passed out after downing the suspicious liquid and woke up much later feeling weak and powerless. Uh-oh. Did you check the expiration date on that bottle? Navigation readings confirm that we're still headed towards potential landing site. Repairs completed. Oh, no. Baby Bronco. Uh. Uh -huh. Hmm. Hmm. Huh. Hmm. Huh. Hmm. 
<laughs> mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. So it would be, and we can turn it to see various things here, uh, but it doesn't really say. She, she's flexible, clever, and average. His agility is average, intelligence is dumb, but his strength is strong. So, I mean, I wish it told us our his exact stats. It doesn't. So, oh well. Oh! It's got a heart on it! Also, remember how we were talking about different things showing up around here? The different art seeming to indicate different things? We don't have this little Enterprise thing over here anymore. I was looking around to try and see if I could see anything else that looked different. Um, we still have this triangle down here. We've got this little piece of paper down here, but I think that's been there for quite a while in some of the other things. Anyhow, let's see what we've got here. It says, she could be the one to my zeros. The signal to my noise. I've been transmitting with an abandoned shuttle nearby. She just agreed to meet me. Us. I meant us. You have to say yes, Captain. She's drifting and has no crew, so she offered to share her resources. Just one problem. She's a communist. She believes we are, too. She blinded me with her thrusters, and it just came out. She's not a bad shuttle, though. She just wants us to take pride in the computations we do. If you want her resources, you'll have to go along with this. Share common soup with her and tell her that we're very social and love the party. Please, Captain. So we can drink the soup, and we can pretend to be Russian. Or we can be like, no! No, we don't want to be friends with a communist space shuttle. What do you guys think? I think that we should drink the soup. I think that we should make friends wherever we can make friends. <laughs> let's, let's drink the soup. It's a trap, but do it anyway, says Boo. Well, you know, there's no way we're getting out of this whole thing alive. So, I mean, I think that's fair, right? Drink the soup. Not, yeah, exactly. I don't really know that we want our AI to just be like, you know what? She lives fine without a crew. I can live fine without a crew. And just bent us into space. Whoops. <laughs> um... Makes me wonder what upgrading some of these things do. What does an upgraded sock puppet look like? I don't even know. Uh, repair. We could repair the lighter. We could repair the armor. Or we could craft. Let's craft the communicator. We know we're going to need a communicator because every single time we've ever landed on a planet, we've done a face plant directly into the comm system here and had to replace it. The puppet... The puppet? Boo, I don't want to upgrade the puppet. We still have the puppet right now. We'll, we'll think about it, but not right now. Not right now. No, today we're going to have soup with our communist space shuttle friend, and we are going to make a radio telephone. Upgrade the puppet to make the best puppet. Thank you for agreeing to fly to the abandoned shuttle and for pretending to be a communist. It meant a lot to me. I think it was your willingness to share soup that sold it. Thank you for not rushing me. I could have shared data with her for hours. When we docked into her bay and she sent input into my algorithms, time slowed and I think I counted in base eight. We agreed to part ways as friends. This is space after all. She was very generous with her resources, so you have nothing compl to complain about. Plus 40 chemicals. I can't say if it was your engineering skill or dumb luck, but you were able to craft a high quality item. We now have a stereo communicator. Okay. Stereo communicator and 40 chemicals. That's pretty good. Unfortunately, I feel like there's a good chance that she uploaded some sort of a horrible virus into our AI. Also, we've got the red glowing planet out there again. I think we should go back to the Red Glowing Planet. Last time we passed on, it took us five days to get to another place. And that was five days of not being able to run missions. So since we have two people, um, and we've only been to this planet before, let's go ahead and, and let's go. Besides, Robot Planet had commies. This doesn't Robot Planet, so let's just, let's just, just land here. Should we initiate the landing protocol? Hell yes. Put us down on this red spiral death world of yours. 
Um, what else can we craft? We could craft soup. Uh, what will it take to upgrade the crafting module? A lot more power. A lot more power. Okay, well, we're not going to do that right now. And I'm also not going to upgrade the sock pocket for the same thing. We need more power to get up there. Uh, so instead, let's just go ahead and repair the lighter. Sure, that'll work. We're hungry, but not starving. Everything's pretty good right now. I probably do, but can I can't can't craft those right now. There's not anything I can I can do with crafting a gun and a shovel. And I can't upgrade the crafting module. I only have 13 power. I make two per turn. We have to land. So we're going to have to land to go somewhere to get more energy. There's not really anything that we can do about it right now. And I don't want to spend 10 of what we already have to upgrade one of these things because it puts us five turns back from our chance to upgrade this. So, uh, and nothing that we recycle turns into energy. So, we just are going to need to land. So right now, let's go ahead and just repair the lighter. We don't need the armor yet because nothing's on the ground yet. We can repair the armor the next turn. This will only take one turn. So, here we go. Let's land this sucker. Day 11. Phobonos. It's got a name. Our descent towards the storm-ridden planet. It was clear that this wasn't a normal storm. It was ubiquitous and dark, like a blanket of swirling shadow. It was a bumpy ride, but you landed our craft on a safe spot on the planet. The only loss was our communications equipment, which was fried by atmospheric electricity on the way down. From down here it's clear, however. This isn't any kind of storm. This is something else. This planet's surface has experienced a number of wars, nuclear or otherwise. We'd best be wary while exploring, Captain. Oh. Our battery broke. Repairs completed. New item available. Lighter. And then everybody is starving just a little bit. What a lovely planet. Wolverine, I don't want to hear you talking about things that are heavy, black, and pendulous. So let's take a look what happened here. Captain, the expedition module in the back of the captain's available. My advice, order someone to put on the spacesuit and send them outside. We will do that next turn. I think I want to repair the armor. To do that, we'll take one extra turn. But let's see what else we found out here. We have found Warhead Town which could get us chemicals. I think somebody said that was artifacts. I mean, I guess it makes sense. It kind of looks like the cow. And Sock Puppet. Uh, hazards are tentacle monsters, but it takes a long time. Um, we could go to the radio zone. We could get chemicals or artifacts. There's a lot of danger, though. A lot of different dangers. Or we can go to the glade, which is pretty quick, and it only gives us minerals. I, like, I don't think we need to go to the glade. Mm. And then I accidentally clicked the OK button. Um, fortunately, none of these actually give us energy. I feel like Warhead Town is probably the best chance of running into somebody, and they might tell us additional locations. Yeah, this is the same first planet that we landed on way back then, and I think we're going to try and send somebody to Warhead Town once I finish the armor. Can I make the gun at level 2? Is that the problem? 
Because I have 30 minerals right now. I just don't think that I can make it until I hit level 3. So, uh, we're going to repair the armor. And then we're going to send Baby out. I think that he's probably... Well, the Glade might. You're right. Um, I don't know that any of them... I don't know how any of them determine that. Um, we can do the Glade. That's fine. We'll see what it is next turn. Uh, this is our first turn to starve, so I will feed everybody tomorrow and then send Baby out. We actually know that we can take two days of starving and be okay feeding on the third. I'm wondering how far we can push that. I wonder if we can survive three days and eat on the fourth. Hmm. Captain, it would be good to explore this place a little more. Yes, we're going to do that. Uh, but let's look at the events here real quick. It says, we found something interesting, Captain. There's this lonely statue, a tentacled creature shaped vaguely human-like with hands outstretched as if in a religious blessing. The inscription is barely legible, but it says something about an honor and service to a higher cause. Something about the way the statue cups its hands downward reminds me of something. Oh, yes, of course. It's almost exactly the shape of your head. What a coincidence. It's a stretch, but perhaps there's a reward for sticking your noggin in the statue's hands. What do you say, Captain? Will you try it? No! <laughs> no, we won't! Everybody can have a soup. All right, there you go. Soup for everybody. All right, now we come back here. We could craft more soup out of our chemical stock if we wanted to. That may not be a bad idea. We've got a lot, but it's nice to not get behind on things. Um, what happens if we upgrade the armor? Is it upgraded while they're gone? I'm really tempted to upgrade the armor right now. Let's go ahead and upgrade the armor. I have no idea what kind of hell world this is, but let's upgrade the armor. Now look, the little um, Enterprise has appeared on the wall again. We could also repair the battery. Maybe repairing the battery is better than upgrading that. What is, what is the repair? One turn for that? All right, tell you what, let's upgrade the armor right now so that when they go out into the world, hopefully it's upgraded. It seems like the events that we do right now uh, and the other events may occur concurrently, even though it shows them in an order. So let's take a look here. Everybody's getting food. We're upgrading. Wait, no, we weren't going to upgrade it. We were saving the energy to upgrade the system, weren't we? That's right. All right, let's repair the battery. Wish we could just plug that battery in and get additional. So we're not going to do anything crazy like stick our damn fool head inside of a tentacle monster statue. We're going to eat some food. We're going to fix our atomic battery. We just unlocked Fix It Felix. We've now repaired 10 items. You were tempted to put your head in the caring embrace of the creepy statue we found, but decided against it. The tentacled being depicted and the unclear inscription didn't exactly fill you with confidence. Now, while we could have learned something potentially valuable, perhaps sticking one skull into randomly encountered openings isn't the best method of doing research. Good call on that, Captain. And then we repaired our atomic battery. So Megan and Baby are hungry. I forgot to send them out yesterday. I forgot to send them out. Yes, you're right, King Trash Panda. I did forget. All right, let's see what's going on here. Long-term space travel presents many risks to one's physical well-being, from muscular atrophy to laziness to diets notoriously high in sodium. Uh, we need to do an exercise? Hell yes, Baby Bronco is going to do our workout. Right? The big moosey moose needs to go ahead and, and, and do it. Because if we do a good job at this, uh, the one time that we saw this before, we were dispensed soup. And then who doesn't want soup? All right, so we can craft soup. I kind of feel like maybe we should make another soup. So we're going to make another soup. We're doing okay here. I don't want to spend any power on upgrading. Where are we at on power is at 19. I 
Okay. So, we're gonna go ahead and use him for that, and we're gonna go ahead and assign the big Moosey Moose to leave. So he can do the exercise, and then he can leave. So, we'll go to the Glade. It'll only give us minerals, but the hazards seem pretty low, and he'll be back pretty quickly, and hopefully it reveals another one of these locations. Oh, you can't send Baby because Baby is doing the exercise. Mm, okay, then we're not sending Baby. We're sending Megan. I mean, she's not terrible. She's reasonably s speedy, and she's reasonably smart. So we'll send her out. And then do we want to give her anything? Yeah, let's go ahead and give her the armor. All right, so she's going to go. Baby's going to stay and work out, and hopefully Baby's going to be so impressive in his working out that we receive a reward. Flush it. There we go. Mmm, the book might be a good one to give her. We've needed it several times locally, though. Some things I wish that we could have multiple copies of. Baby's form was impeccable. Pull-ups, planks, squats, lunges in this environment? He even added weight by lifting spare parts for the shuttle. Sweaty and roaring, Baby crushed that workout like an empty can of soup. The automated system predicted benefits for being a model Astro Citizen. A hidden dispenser opened and spit out two soup cans. I'm sorry to report that these are the only two surplus cans hidden aboard this ship. Or are they? Megan went for a stroll into the vast, strange northern forest. Let's hope she doesn't enter any gingerbread houses. So we crafted some soup. So we're doing all right. Now, we're keeping the gas mask. Um, she's going out with a helmet. So I'm not too worried about giving him a mask. I feel like that's probably redundant. Uh, we did that once upon a time. Didn't really seem to make any difference, but we fairly frequently need the mask. As a matter of fact, I'm actually, if I was gonna upgrade something, there's a good chance that it would be that. Uh, Captain, a hole appeared right next to our shuttle overnight. It's producing smelly vapors and a nasty gurgling. Now, while it's not immediate, Brad, I'd appreciate it if you made it stop. Now, previously we used tape, and it turned out to be a beast, and it flew away. What happens if we use the handbook? Maybe we can identify it and harness its chemicals somehow. It wouldn't be terrible. The baby's hungry. Emmett's hungry. We've done about all the crafting that we could. We can make another soup. But seriously, at this point in time, we have 14 soups. Well, I know, but there's not been any events that I can think of where they needed it out there. If it was one where it was biohazard, I would consider it. But one where it just looks like blades of grass, I think that's just saying that the terrain itself might be a problem. I don't expect that to be an issue. Um, and I still don't want to upgrade and, and use these resources. I really want to see if we can get the energy back. I don't know that we need to upgrade any of these things yet. So, all right, the book. The book it is. Megan is out doing her thing. Day 15. Oh no. We look very hungry. The noisy, smelly hole near the ship warranted research. You and Baby compared the illustrations in the handbook to the hole in detail, but you should have kept your distance. It was a snoring chameleon razor tail, and it occurred to you only after it woke up and took off seriously injuring you as it went. We'll finally enjoy some quiet, but you need some patching up, Astro Citizens. You're starving, Captain. Better eat and fast. Baby appears weak. Baby is starving. Um, but we're not exactly hurt. Now, he is a bit hurt. His health is weak, and I believe that to be because he took an injury. So, this is day one starving for them. What do we got here? Captain, we were unable to, or we were able to detect transmissions of unknown origin. Yeah, let's go ahead and install our existing communicator into the system so that we can use it to replace this part here. We'll wait one day, and then we'll eat delicious soups. Now, who knows what Megan is out there doing? Not I. Alright, 
so. Great success, Captain. The communicator attached to the communications console works like a charm. I won't judge the aesthetics since we can finally receive and answer transmissions. Now all we need to do is wait for someone to contact us. You could tell the baby was amazed by what we achieved today. He almost smiled. There is hope, Captain. Megan returned from her little jaunt. She's limping a little. Famished after the journey, a bit freaked out. You get comfortable as she begins to tell the story. The glades, transparent, buckling trees, and pointy branches rendered Megan's journey a bit fraught. Most slices and pokes were rebuffed by the sturdy suit that you gave her, but it did suffer a number of scrapes and tears, however. From the bottom of a shimmering pond, she scooped a number of valuable minerals. What an eerie, fruitless experience. In spite of the spookiness, Megan is safely back in the nest. And then it says that Megan isn't back. And then it says baby is in poor health, and Megan's in poor health, and Megan is really tired. And our armor is all tore up. Okay, so you're actually hungry, not starving. These two are getting food. You're not getting food yet. Let's see, what do we got going on here? Captain... There's a huge construct of some kind approaching the shuttle. It's neither animal nor robot. It's made out of moving crystal lattices, like a giant walking crystal source. Ow! That was one hell of a hit. The crystal source slammed into the shuttle and is currently scraping the hull open with its claws? But I don't know, but I think it's trying to extract our minerals. Captain, how will you stop this? We have no gun. We're in trouble mineral-wise. We're deep shit mineral wise. Can we craft something with the minerals before we have no minerals? Yes, yeah, so let's start crafting another communicator. Uh, and then we'll come over here. Do we want to send somebody else out? The armor's damaged. We could send the spacesuit, though. Instead of crafting that, we could repair this with chemicals but our chemicals aren't in danger so I'm I think it's worth it to say crap the communication system this turn in case we lose them so uh, food for you and food for you we're not gonna do anything because we don't have the ability to make a gun yet we need more power which means we need to find a location that will give us power and hopefully we can get another communicator out of it beforehand Yeah, so we're feeding baby. We're feeding us. Uh, haven't healed him yet, though. Uh, you chose to do nothing to stop the crystal source from attacking the shuttle, and it scraped at the hull for a few hair-raising minutes before wandering off. I guess it got what it came for. The standard Astro Citizen protocol for dealing with monsters of unknown origin, especially when U.S. government property is at risk, is appeasement. But some of our, put some of our minerals outside to make the crystal source go away. You can thank me later. You know, for saving your life. The baby is in poor health. Crafting completed. New item available. Communicator. We are hungry. Megan's rested. She's starving. Baby is hungry. Now, it's interesting. This is the super radio from before. You can see it still has the, the new art. I wonder if that makes a difference. Because it's not like we can do anything with it now. All right, so what's the system here? Something fell from the sky in a flash, and now we're surrounded by a swarm of red, winged somethings. Of course, I anticipated this. This is scenario number 87394B. The small creatures are flying into our walls and waves, causing the hull to reverberate like a speaker. Are you God? For generations, we have been searching for the one who thinks outside the hive. Each jump from planet to planet decimates us. Are you the one? I, for one, believe that you deserve a cult following, Captain, but the choice is yours. And I will follow a lesson I learned a very long time ago. If someone asks you if you're a god, you say yes. So, what do we got going on here? We can craft soup. We can repair the armor, so we're going to absolutely repair the armor. And let's look at our rationing here. You guys wanted me to use the first aid kit on Baby, so we'll do that. 
And then if we come here, she is starving. He's just hungry, but he's also weak. So hopefully that fixes his weak. So he's going to get the first aid. And she's going to get a soup. And we're going to show them our enhanced idol. We are, in fact, a god. Hope they don't try and lay eggs in us. The swarm of tiny red aliens spoke to you through the hull's vibration. You tried answering, but they just hovered over our ship like flies over fresh manure. And then you took the artifact, and the improbable happened. They moved in unison with your movements. You spoke, anticipating their questions, and they flew in response. Your minds must have touched, and you heard each other. You read the handbook to them, revealing the galaxy's laws. They flew in synchronicity with your lips the whole while. When you finished, they drew an intricate shape in the air and looked, and you looked at it calmly as if you understood. At last, they sped away. Megan appears to be weak. Armor repairs completed. Baby's feeling better today. Megan is still hungry. <laughs> What's going on, Big C? All right, so let's see what we got here. Captain, our levels are working below their optimal levels. I mean, we're just going to fix this because we're super smart. Let's just use intelligence. That is Emmett's strength. Speaking of strength, it's time for baby Bronco to go out into the world. Now, we didn't uncover any new locations, unfortunately. So, baby, we're going to send you quite a bit further away. A lot further away. So we'll send baby Bronco. He's dumb as a post, man. He doesn't even have any pips and in intelligence, but he is strong as hell. We'll give him the armor. Mm, I'm not sure how I feel about giving him the statue. If those bugs come back and I don't have it, I feel like maybe I'm in trouble. Is he smart enough to go for the guide? Maybe he should take fire. Yeah, there's just nothing I really want to give him. I think that's enough right there. I think the armor's just gonna be enough. So, uh, Parthy Poo, thanks for the follow. Appreciate you coming, hanging out here. Remember everybody that uh, this is a brand new game. It came out yesterday. If you're really interested in it, it is available in Steam and it is absolutely worth it. Uh, Megan, you're just going to have to stay weak and hungry for now. Baby Bronco, out into the world. Take that with you. Go to Warhead Town. Nobody needs food, though. Nobody, like, desperately needs food. So I think that's good enough. Let's find out what happens. Day 19. Nicely done, Captain. You proved yourself smart enough to fix the malfunctioning component. The ship's systems are now working at standard capacity. The ship's really falling apart, I'm afraid. There's not enough time to properly finish it. Who would have expected an atomic apocalypse to break out so suddenly? Well, I, I could, but no one listened to me. No one ever listens to computerized assistants. Oh well, that's just life, I guess. Just ones and zeros, and mostly zeros. And Baby set off for a shanty-looking settlement to the south. We'll see what he discovers. And then we are, of course, starving just a little bit, but we can wait a little while on that. This is... We did two last night, and this is our second one for today. So... Well, technically, we've had two endings. We got the we died ending three times, and then we got the communist ending. So commies came and took over our pod. Yikes. Sir, I'm detecting an unusual disturbance in our mini reactor. Last time we tried to talk to them, and those bastards took our communicator. So we could try and use our artifact, or we could just do nothing. Since they think we're God, I'm a little reluctant 
to do the artifact, but I know that we can just craft another first tier artifact. So let's try the artifact itself. Let's see what we can get out of it. Um, this is our first turn to starve. She's still hungry. Is there anything that we need to do back here? Craft. Uh, we can craft another medical kit. Excellent. It'll take three turns, but let's do it. That'll probably kill him. Something about exotic matter. This thing generates force fields and communicates with bugs. Well, we'll see. The space-time breach in the mini-reactor chamber was still bubbling when you threw the artifact in there. The figure on the other side became perfectly clear for a moment. It was you! The tear closed up just as you got a good look. Well, you know, that's interesting. We talked about that last time when they took our communicator. What if it was us and we took our, we reached into the past to take our own communicator? And then we died before anything could happen with that. Uh, so, interesting. Okay. Um, the first aid kit came flying out. Oh, okay. So, they gave us a first aid kit. Mm, crafting completed. And it just gave us back our chemicals. So we basically got one. It wouldn't let us generate another one. Okay. So we're going to make another artifact instead then. Because we need another artifact. Uh, let's see here. I don't want to gross you out, Captain. But a giant mutated insect is rolling a rather fecal path towards us. It appears to be a giant dung beetle. And judging by your face, the stench is unbearable. If it continues on with its rancid route, it may collide with a shuttle. It's too large to attack, but perhaps you could scare it off its path. Do you wish to interfere? Man, no, I can't heal that old lady. I mean, I could, but... Meh. We don't really need to right now, do we? We'll think about it. So do we want to scare off a giant dung beetle? I am imagining, like, starship trooper-sized beetle here. Because it says it's too big for us to attack. It's Probably also because we don't have a gun. Uh, do we want to try and scare it off its path? Well, I don't want it to crush us. I don't want it to break things in here. I guess we'll just try and scare it off. Go away, you giant bug. Go away. All right, so now we need to do food. Everybody gets food. Exactly. Would you like to know more? I almost was going to use uh, the whole Starship Troopers movie thing as the theme for this channel when I got started, but I wound up not doing that. Wound up moving on to some other things, but it was something I very strongly thought about. Uh, sadly, it doesn't tell me any sort of status on him. I was wondering if it would give us an indicator of how long, uh, like he was going there, he was coming back. I don't know if any of you guys play Sheltered. I've played a lot of Sheltered, and I kind of like the idea that you can follow them on the mini-map and get an idea of when they're coming back. So, let's get our new idol. And let's find out what happened. Day 21. You ran toward the giant dung beetle, screaming in an attempt to deter it from your path. It did stop and study you with soup-can-sized eyes. But only out of curiosity, it grabbed you, covered you in mucus, and stuffed you into its giant dung ball. <laughs> <laughs> you managed to extricate yourself from the sphere of excretion, but the mucus and filth has seeped into your skin. You said you felt weak and shook a limp fist at the rolling bug as it disappeared into the distance. At least you had the courtesy of cleaning yourself up before re-entering the shuttle. Thanks, Captain. Megan's still weak, Baby is out exploring, and we've crafted a new artifact. Well, okay, so we may be weak, but we didn't actually drop to weak status. So that's a good thing. What do we got here? Can you hear my teeth chattering, Captain? Of course you can't, because I'm a computer and I have no teeth. Duh. I still regret to inform you that the heat module is stuck in a cooling feedback loop. It's going to get very cold very soon. My vacuum tubes will be fine, but you should protect yourself while you're freeze. Now, we've worn the armor before in the past. Unfortunately, it's out and about. So, I did promise that we would use the sock puppet the next chance that we could use the sock puppet. So, even though the lighter seems like the thing that would probably help keep you alive, we're going to go ahead and use the sock puppet. What happens if it's cold and freezing and we have a sock puppet? Do we have a very the thing moment where the sock puppet looks at us and we gaze? 
dimly back at it, and we both just drink from a bottle of whiskey and wait for the other to reveal themselves. Big C, you're absolutely right. I agree with you that the lighter is by far the smartest option here. Uh, we had a bunch of people that wanted a, uh, a sock puppet last time, and they narrowly got outvoted. Oh, no, you're right. You're right. If somebody freezes, that's probably a really big problem. Uh, sock puppet crew. Sock puppet crew. What do you think? I want to go for lighter. I think Big C's right. Uh, pretty much anything that King Trash Panda votes for, I know, is meant to just destroy me because he might actually be Loki. Okay, lighter it is. Lighter it is. That's a bunch of lighters. Okay. Um, and we could craft more soup. I don't think I want to do that just yet. How is our how is our food stocks? Nine. Actually, you know, maybe it's a good idea to do it. Um, I don't want to spend the energy on upgrading anything. We're up to 35 energy finally. Uh, and there's nothing here I want to recycle. So let's go ahead and make a soup just to keep the system busy. Always be doing something here. Weak and hungry. Hungry. You guys really wanted me to do the medical kit on Megan, so we'll do the medical kit on Megan. Yep, reverse psychology doesn't work whenever it supports what I wanted to do anyway. <laughs> In short, it's difficult to do the manipulations because I was just going to do what I wanted to do anyway. I wanted you guys to convince me. So let's see here. The heat module is reset to factory defaults and running in its tropical setting. Captain, suggestion, why don't we make the lighter a heat module backup system? It worked today. It will again. So that worked. Good. Awesome. Crafting completed. We made soup. Megan feels much better than before. She is no longer weak. And not only is she no longer weak, well, you know, I'm a man and you're a woman and baby's gone, so how about we finally take a nap? <laughs> What's going on here? Captain, the mysterious signal detected nearby turned out to be aliens. The chatter sounds like walkie-talkie comms emanated from a ruined alien tunnel that runs off into the deep darkness. What would you like to explore the tunnel with? Some protection, a weapon, or a light source would be wise as a bare minimum. Well, we can really only do one of these things. I don't want to charge into there completely blind. Although I'm a little concerned that if this is a planet full of bugs, maybe taking a light source ain't the great thing. You know, I really can't tell. I really can't tell where she's at. We better hope that she's not because we seem to be all the humans that are out there. Unless you count the commies. Uh, we can go ahead and craft a new med kit, so we're going to do that. We're going to touch the cow a little bit for good luck here. All right, you guys. So, baby is still out doing the baby things. We're going to start working on the medical kit. It's going to take three turns to do so, and we're going to go explore this alien bug hole with nothing but a space zippo. Yeah, I know. She's got grandkids. It's true. Although I know a lady that is in her 30s, and she's got grandkids. It's a little terrifying. I suppose if you really got after it, you could probably be in your late 20s and have grandkids. But man, you would have to really be after it. Uh, you went creeping into the alien tunnel nearby with trepidation. You had only just come upon a warped station platform when a group of aliens appeared and aimed weapons at you. They must have been watching us for some time as they were able to speak in broken, approximated English. They said they need our help. They run Vactrain Central, a planet-wide vacuum tunnel system that links to countless supply stockpiles all over Phobonos. However, the inhabitants of neighboring Silo 476 were too dangerous to connect with. Apparently, the war that wrecked this world was started by the 476ers over 200 years ago, and they've asked for our help when the time comes. Oh, no. Um, so, baby's still away. We're starving for the first time on both of them. So we can still go another day. Really want this thing to upgrade. We're going to get there. It's going to be... Let's see. Tomorrow will be... Five more rounds. 
Five more rounds and we can upgrade, and hopefully the recipe for our gun is in there. Last night I was browsing through some of your designs of be- or th browsing through some designs of beautiful machines. Never you mind why. He and Boo were, were checking them out together, I think. Now pay attention, I found a food dispensing machine on board. All shuttles in the Astro Citizen program were to be equipped with one, but ours is missing a lever. But apart from that, it seems functional. It's hardly rocket scientists. So you should manage to fix it. But how? Let's use tape. Tape fixes everything. So they can eat tomorrow. Well, it would be nice if it is, unfortunately. I was kind of hoping. I've been clicking. I can't, well, I've been kind of clicking around on different things as we've been doing things. I like how it makes little sparky noises or... Um, don't worry, there's a few others. All these devices and stuff, right? You clip them all, they all make noises, and I like that. But I was kind of hoping I would be able to click on something and, like, a can of soup would roll out of it or something like that. But that doesn't seem to be the case. All right, so we're going to use the tape. Baby's still doing baby stuff. We will eat tomorrow. Day 24. The official government research shows there's not a thing in the universe that cannot be fixed with duct tape. You are very resourceful to tape a chair leg where the lever used to be. Now, just a little pulling. There you go, Captain. A brand new can of soup straight from the vending machine. Fortunately, there was only one portion inside. Don't worry. I got, remi I got rid of the remaining junk. Your stomach remains empty. Eat something. Megan looks starved. And we are now in poor health. That's fine. What we got going on here? Captain, I found something interesting on the surface of the planet. Looks like somebody passed their time by playing tic-tac-toe again. Now, every time we've done this before, we've gotten mineral resources. So let's go ahead and just do it. Huh. And huh, she says. All right, let's go ahead and give food to everybody. One more turn and we'll have another med kit. Perfect. Okay. I'm hoping baby comes back pretty soon. I miss that big old moosey. Alright, so the dismantling of the supersized tic-tac-toe game in progress was a success. Um, we still appear to be weak. Baby's still out exploring. We crafted a high-quality first aid kit. A modern first aid kit. Well, take a look like that. It's all spiffy with, like, angles on it and things. So, Megan's hungry. We're weak and hungry. I think we're still okay with that. What does the computer want us to do here? It says, The planet's crust appears to have undergone a multitude of drastic traumas. Because over a hill nearby, you find a broad chasm running to the world's core. Wow, that's deep. A toothy rift in the tectonic crust. Most interestingly, on the other side of the chasm is an angular alien bunker. Its counterpart mostly on the far side and in ruins, but a cable runs between the two, linking up to small, safe-like object on the far side. Do you wish to tightrope walk over to the container, or attempt to pull it over to you? Oof. That's no bueno. Um... There's not a whole lot that we can do. We have to choose one or one or the other. We actually have a rank in strength. We have no ranks in agility. So, I mean, strength is pretty much where it's at, right? So. Uh -huh. um, let's go ahead and, I guess, use the medical kit as well. No, actually, you know what? We could hurt ourselves really bad on this, whatever it is. So let's save the medical kit to try and fix ourselves if something bad happens. Uh, we can craft more soup. I think we're okay on soup at the moment. I don't want to waste it. We're getting close here. We've got a lot of minerals, of course, so we're going to recycle a thing. And then we're going to turn around and use that recycling to generate something else. So let's go ahead and recycle the lighter. And we'll get chemicals for it. And then we can build another one next turn. That seems to be the method that we have for turning minerals into chemicals or minerals into soup, as we've been using it before. So, 
Yeah, let's go ahead and we're just gonna pull it. So strength. So let's find out. If we hurt ourselves really bad, we'll have a medical kit to deal with it. If not, we'll use a medical kit today. You sized up the weight of the safe and figured you'd be able to pull it across the crevasse to your side of the drop, and you did. Heaving and tugging, you withstood the drop into the crevice and had it pulled up to you within a couple of minutes. However, it turned out not to be a safe. It turned out to be a fridge. Or an empty fridge. At least if another bomb goes off in this world, you know where to hide. I've lost track of baby captain. He slinked into the streets of a favela-like site on the southern horizon and disappeared. Probably for good. Having considered the predicament, I made the call to prop up a replacement suit for all your exploration needs. Oh no, baby has died. And we didn't get anything out of that. Well, okay, we did the recycling, but baby is dead. Or at least he's gone completely native. Hanging out in a favela somewhere. Alright, so let's go ahead and, and start with... Uh, I guess we'll heal ourselves. And let's see what's going on here. An alien's knocking at our door, sir. It speaks... It's through its mask in broken English, just like the ones from Bactrian Central. Except this one says it's from Silo 476, so the... Bat guys? The more it talks, the more complicated things get. Nobody know who war start, but everyone know who Vactrain have. Vactrain Central! We kill them! Help us! Who or their side you on? Side with the aliens from Silo 476? Oh no. We still don't have the ability to make any kind of a weapon. But one's a big group and one's not a big group. The not a big group, though, is known to be violent. Do they sound like commies, Killer Casey? Maybe they are. Maybe it's just the accent that I picked for them. I don't know. Nobody know who war stopped. But everyone know who Vactrain have. Vactrain Central. So what do you guys think? You went yes and starved to death before they returned. Ah, oh, baby. Baby is a big old baby Huey. I miss that bastard. All right, so you guys think that we should ally with 476, or do you think that we should stay allied with Vactrain Central? I'll go with the consensus on that. Go ahead and drop in the chat whether you want thumbs up or thumbs down. I'll give you a couple of minutes to do that, because I'm going to get a drink. I've gotten a little thirsty from all the talking. Right, I'm back. Let's see what we've got here. We've got a no, a nay. We've got a ye and a no. So that's a no, my dog. No. All right. So we voted a big nay to that guy, unfortunately. Uh, let's go ahead and craft. Well, I guess we can craft the armor again now, but let's make a lighter. These guys seem kind of buggy. Uh, weak and hungry. Hungry. And we are going to medical ourselves. It's interesting that he's still there. I bet he drops off next round. Now we have a lot of food for two people. We can survive this weird war. It says, when you refuse to help 
out. The alien from Silo 476 stormed off. You re you this regret, it shouted over its shoulder. I am hoping we don't regret this, sir. I'm hope no, actually, he says, I hope we don't this regret, sir. <laughs> he just went ahead and went straight with the terrible grammar that we've got offered there. Uh, antagonizing locals may not be a wise choice, but I trust you know what you're doing, and we have made a lighter. Hellspawn420, thanks for the follow. Thanks for coming out and checking out 60 parsecs. It's nice to have some extra people out here when we're all that's left of humanity. Um, it looks like we managed to piece ourselves together. We're no longer weak. In fact, we've moved right from healthy up to vigorous, so it improved us by two levels. Uh, we're starving for the first day. We can actually go one more day at least before we eat. It's not so bad. We've got nine soups. Um, let's go ahead and craft the armor. If we're going to start fights, it would be nice to have some armor. An alien vessel is approaching. Oh shit, that came quick. Their ship is rigged with a light show synced to the music. They started blasting as soon as we opened comms. <laughs> oh no. Bom, 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 bom. Big C, thanks for hopping on the escape pod with us. Uh, the aliens claim to be of the Dance Lord tribe and they're searching for the best dancers in the galaxy. Show us what you got. They've challenged our tribe to a dance-off, specifically a sock hop. If you don't accept, they will vaporize us with their ultra-high-frequency speakers. So how will we defeat the dance lords? Uh, we're going to try for fancy footwork here. We are going to dance. Um, you know what? Here's the thing, right? If we are going to dance, we're going to dance on a full stomach. Because why the hell not? I mean, it's nice to have the soup. But I mean, I would rather not die starving. Let's call it good enough. Let's see what happens. And we will send Megan out next turn if we survive, because we'll have finished crafting the armor. Yeah, it's probably failure in coming. Oh! You and Megan accepted the dance floor's challenge, but lost the dance off. When the aliens beamed you up, you both stumbled onto the dance floor, and it was all downhill from there. Poor rhythm, shoddy footwork, not even a pair of sequin jackets that could have saved you. The Dance Lords honor anyone brave enough to step onto the holy dance floor. Their leader, Warbop, spared you, but warned you that you'd better have sweeter moves next time. Okay. Um, one more day on the armor, and then Megan will go out. So, Megan spotted a blue veiny fruit growing out of a crack in the ground nearby. It's pulsating slightly. Sh shut up, you guys. <laughs> shut up. Uh, should someone give the fruit a try? Normally, I'd refrain from having such a rash and irresponsible decision up to a human, but there are some empty stems nearby, so perhaps it's edible. What do you guys think? We have to pick one of the two people, and I don't think we're going to pick Emmett. If Emmett dies, then it's it's game over. So, I guess Megan's gonna have to eat the blue veiny fruit growing out of the crack in the ground nearby. Sorry, Megan, I hope you've got your shit together. This could be... This could be rough. Alright. Eat it. Just eat it. Eat it. Open up your mouth and feed it. You announced that the strange little fruit near the ship was worth trying out, and Megan's hand shot up. However, the joyous look on her face as she sunk her teeth quickly turned to horror. The remaining half was full of wriggling purple worms. She began trying to spit it out, but fell into a spasm and woke a few moments later, saying her mind was buzzing as if at double speed. Wow. Okay. So, hey, Miss P. Thanks for joining us in the escape pod here as we try and uh, try and survive here 60 parsecs away from Earth. Well, where Earth used to be, I guess. Oh, and it looks like you brought Absolute Chaos 71 with you. Hey, the escape pod's getting nice and full. Um, let's see here. Uh, she flipped a handstand and perambulated around the shuttle. Clearly, the worms did something. Let's hope the effects don't turn. And then we've made our armor. So, I mean... 
Her sanity's fine. This is this is fine. This is fine. Sir, a powerful earthquake. The dark, sand-like earth underfoot is bouncing and springing, throwing rocks into the air along. Wait, that's not a rock. That's a torpedo, an undetonated nuke. The pre-war relic has been thrown into the air and landed on top of the shuttle. It could detonate at any second. Will you use your intellect to think of a solution or get up there and decharge it with a power cable? Uh, well, let's use our brains because we are, we are best at our brains. And I think it's time to send Megan out into the world. Um, unfortunately, Warhead Town, just not good. Didn't really work for us. So I guess we have to try the radio zone. Uh, at least it's got chemicals. Um, that's so many hazards, though. <laughs> that's really rough. Um, and we still don't have a weapon. That's the other thing that kills me. All right. Well, let's go ahead and choose Megan. Megan's going to go out there. We'll give her the armor. Um, let's give her the lighter. We, I... I Wonder if we can make another lighter if she takes one with her. I don't really know. We could give her a soup can. I don't know what she would do with it, but we can give her a soup can. We've got a lot of soup. Let's do that. All right, we're going to send her out on an expedition. Um, what about crafting? 51, finally. We're going to go ahead and start by upgrading the crafting module. In three turns, hopefully, we can build a gun. So we're going to try and fix the bomb. Maybe we can fix it and then we can tell the 476ers not to attack us. We've got a nuke, baby. We've got a nuke. I guess we'll find out. Very astute, sir. You accessed my scanners and checked the levels of local radiation finding absolutely nothing above normal levels. If this was a nuke, it was long defunct. I couldn't even pick up any electromagnetic signals. You looked relieved when I gave the all clear. It looks like you learned to stop worrying and love the bomb. Oh, that was... That was a really far reach game. That was really far. A shockwave shortly afterwards rolled the defunct dice back into the dark sand, out of sight, out of mind. Megan strode off towards the green-tinted radio zone. If we had shot glasses, I'd propose a soup-based toast to her safe return. Urine's still in great health, but you're starving, Captain. Better eat and fast. Let's see what's going on here. Something's wrong on the ship, sir. Or the entire planet. Look out the window. A huge mushroom cloud erupted on the horizon. But it's frozen. Stock still. It also appears to be raining. Raining... Safety pins and bottles of ointment? Reality is getting weird on Phobonos, sir. Until this anomaly passes, you had better do something to keep yourself grounded. The artifact appears untouched by the anomaly, or you could use a sock puppet. Well, I mean, obviously, Mubi is going to save us all. Lord Mubi, save us all. Um, upgrading. Three more days. All right. Uh, we will wait one more day to eat. Flush it. Day 31. Thank goodness that reality-bending nightmare ended, sir. It must have been caused by the detonation of a powerful weapon, though not a nuclear or chemical one. Throughout the ordeal, you decided to focus on the artifact on the shelf, which was behaving remarkably normally. You picked it up, it fell back down. You turned it upside down, it didn't right itself. That helped keep your mind screwed on until the, the space-time anomaly passed. You're still starving, sir always craft some soup. Well, we're just gonna eat some soup. We're doing pretty good on it, but maybe we will craft another one when we finish making our upgrade. We'll see. I really want that laser gun if we can get it. Oh no, here we are. We needed a gun. Captain, a troop of aliens with clipboards are bashing on our doors. They're all heavily mutated with some wonky limbs and some with extra limbs and one with no limbs at all. And they clamp some sort of device onto the airlock door and force it open. Fifteen of the little gas-masked aliens get stuck in our airlock, scribbling on scaly paper. If you have a weapon, you could wave it at them and make a warning attack. Or the alternative is to leave them to it. They only seem to be taking records. Well, we don't have a gun. 
So, we're just gonna do nothing, I guess. We are eating today. Delicious food. Are they like census takers or little engineers or marketers? Would you like to take a survey? Oh no. You decided to let the troop of mutated bureaucrats run around our ship with clipboards. They took a note on every little detail in the place and they stayed all night. Well, uh, that wasn't a lonely thing. Uh, once they were either bored of recording every detail or wanted to stress test all of our equipment, they began to put metal bats out and began bashing things. They wrecked some equipment and resources before you managed to herd them out of the ship with manic screaming. So they broke our gas mask, our book, and our tape. And we did eat something, so we're okay there. All right. So, I can't map the surface of this planet. Phobonus is a toxic, war-torn... You'll need good maps, and something's jamming me. When I try to access the system, I get this message. You are trespassing. My domain. Pay tribute or die. Regards the Watchman. Ugh. Some sort of territorial entity. Perhaps Execurity? Will you give it something? I mean, we could give it soup. We got a lot of soup. We could give it a sock puppet. I mean, we gotta give it the sock puppet, right? We give it the book, but the book's torn. We give it the sock puppet. Maybe he'll make friends with it. Come on, Mooby. Bless us with the sock puppet. All right, so one more turn for this guy. Let's find out what happens with giving him the sock puppet. I just have this vision of him taking him and... It being like when Satan found Mr. Hat in South Park and they became friends. I guess we'll find out. Uh, you offered the Watchman the sock, pushing it through the door with the words, Great Watchman, this sock provides endless joy. Behold his googly eyes. A swish whittled past your head and the sock fell into three parts. Ow. You're just like the ones who live underground, the voice groaned. I'll spare my energy. Let them kill you. So long. The jam lifted, and the creature's words left you in a foul mood. Megan's not back yet, but we did finish crafting the crafting module. Oh, also, look, we got a little globe on the wall now. So, again, something is changing as, like, these indicators of what's happening here have something to do with what's happening in the story. They're indicators of some sort. Uh, craft. We can finally craft a gun. It's going to take a little while. But yes, right? Yes. So what's going on here? The aliens are becoming a nuisance. This one is clanging at the ship yelling, El Pimi! What is El Pimi anyway? Oh, it was asking for assistance. The aliens from Silo 476 are attacking back train central. What do you think, Captain? Go on in force to settle the dispute once and for all, or try and defuse it with diplomacy. Well, let's try diplomacy. We're not all that great at strength, and I don't really have a gun, so... Uh, we're experimental, we're vigorous, we have five cans of soup. I don't really want to use another soup yet. But I really want that gun. Let's see if we can last long enough to get that gun. I'll feel a lot better once we have it. Oh, uh, we could... we could eat. I could maybe pull us up out of hunger. Um... <laughs> you decided to settle the dispute over the back train system once and for all by negotiating with aliens who barely speak English. You and character name strutted into the back train tunnel, waving a piece of cloth that you found on the surface, shouting, hold your fire, hold your fire. Either side was convinced by your negotiation skills. You used language slightly too complex for these hermit-like beings. And during the discussion, guns were drawn while explosions rang out. Now most of Vactrain Central and the nearby tunnel system has been destroyed. And you barely made it out alive. The Phobians played it just like the Soviets. Cunning and slimy. It looks like this odyssey has come to an end. Megan hasn't returned from the Wall of Radiation. Perhaps she was squished by a particularly large mutant hummingbird and will remain lost to the radioactive winds of Phobonus forever. Not all is lost, though. For I took the liberty to display another exploration... Deploy... A it says display, but it should be deploy. I mean, I guess you could display it, but you deployed it. 
uh, deploy another exploration suit. It's just like the one you had before, although you have no one left to send on an expedition anyway. You're starving, Captain. I recommend you find something to eat. Megan died. Well, I mean, I guess we can eat. It's just us. So, nobody can leave. I guess we're just going to sit here. Uh, Captain, my weather systems are detecting a storm. All right, we're just going to use the batteries so that we can continue to look at it. Uh, we're still crafting a gun. Although, since everybody blew themselves to hell, it may not be as necessary. Crud. Yeah, so we had two different uh, people, and both of them died uh, from just walking out there. I mean, God, maybe I should have give. Maybe I should have gotten a gun beforehand. Um, it's critical to get energy at the beginning. That's all I can think of. Um, whenever we're doing things at the very beginning, when it gives us a chance to go pick up one crate of crafting materials, we got to pick up the energy like immediately. And we have to just use the energy, no upgrades or anything else like that. Energy has got to be used for upgrading the system immediately. Or I just have to make a note that I always need to start with a gun. So let's see what's going on here. I am a machine, and machines cannot hear voices. The voices that I'm not hearing right now are getting very loud, though. Oh, you hear them, too? So we had a two-dimensional species. Last time, we used the lighter, and it worked quite well. Uh, so let's go ahead and do it again. We're still constructing things. We're still hungry. You know what? We got a lot of soup. Let's uh -huh. eat another soup. Why not? We can't leave. We can't get any more supplies, so... We're just gonna eat. Hey! What's going on, Astroin? Uh-oh. The two-dimensional species invaded your ship. You couldn't see them. They were invisible to the 3D world most of the time, but they could not handle the spotlight. Bashfully, they slipped out one by one. Staring might be rude, but apparently it wins battles and saves lives. Crafting completed. New gun available. We are no longer hungry and we are in peak mental condition. I guess we're out taking a walk around the system, it looks like. Yep. I'm glad I finally convinced you to go for a short walk around the shuttle and stretch a little outside. Even if you claim I forced you with my constant whining. It's for your own good, Captain. When you stepped outside, you noticed a small asteroid coming right at you. You tried to run back inside, but oh, it looks like the airlock snapped shut behind you. I feel like maybe our own Astro AI is trying to kill us. I need a moment to reopen the doors for you, so you need to figure out a way to deal with the asteroid yourself. Will you dodge out of the way gracefully, or grab the nearest flat and heavy rock as a shield? Well, we're gonna get the hell out of the way. I'm glad that we ate and are on the top of our game. Um. And I think we're going to go ahead and make some armor while we're at it. We probably should make a sock puppet, but here's the thing. If we go insane, if it's anything like gone in 60 seconds, we're irretrievably insane. You basically need somebody else to give that stuff to you. Once you're insane, they no longer pay attention to your orders. So, okay, so the communicator works. Okay, well, that's good to know. The lighter's always worked really well um, for ending it without a conflict and without breaking it, but maybe we could get something out of communicating with them. Who knows? Uh, you deftly dodged the asteroid's path, and when the dust settled, confirmed you're in one piece. On further inspection, the asteroid reminded you of partially chewed bubble gum. Let's give you a few ideas about the scale of the universe and its inhabitants that you weren't too keen to entertain. We're doing pretty good. We're experimental, vigorous, and alert. We are healthy, and we are full, and life is good. Except we're very lonely. Sir, nearby there's another one of the pillbox-like bunkers that litter this planet. This one's top's been blown open, as if something detonated inside. You poke your head inside and find a giant empty storeroom. It would be easy to get lost in there. Test your mental mapping skills, or try to climb to a particularly tall unit for a vantage point. Uh, it's saying a one or a nothing here. I'm assuming that these tasks like this are difficult. And so this is like a minus two, because normally we have a two in agility and a three in intelligence. So I'm looking at this as something like a difficulty minus two kind of a thing, where it reduces our stats by that much. Regardless, intelligence is still our best option here. 
So, intelligence, we got it going on. We're still making armor, just so we can try and be awesome whenever everybody comes in. So let's see what happens. We're going to be in dire straits if we can't ever go out and, and, and do anything on an expedition. We're just going to wind up starving to death. So, plain whaling. As you strolled into the nearby alien storage facility confidently, knowing full well that you'd navigate the dark shelves and leave safely. You emerged five hours later, empty-handed and furious. Around ten feet up, however, you became paralyzed with acrophobia, and it took an hour for you to talk yourself down. You still look quite vigorous, sir. Crafting completed. New item available. Now we have armor. So if we select this and then we pick a location like the glade... Nope. Nobody. You cannot send the captain. Captains don't just go down with their ship. They are stuck in their ship forever. Uh, Captain, our communication equipment is detecting something, and I don't think it's a transmission. I think it's a whale. Something is crying out for help nearby. Would you like to go investigate? Well, sure. I don't really want to stick around in here any longer than... It's just one of those things. Uh, let's go ahead and repair the mask as well. I feel like there's a good chance that we could that we could use that at some point. You went out to investigate the eerie crying sound on the stormy dystopian plains and came back with a stumbling little alien. It seems weak, possibly injured, as if lonely and as lonely as if an, from an emergency escape pod flying through the cosmos. You brought it in and propped it in the corner. Repairs completed, new item available, mask. Hey, look, we got a little alien buddy here. Can we fix him up? Is he making up for the fact that all of our crew is dead? You stop dancing immediately and listen, this is a crisis. You're not a sailor on Broadway. I must admit, you improvise beautifully. You've been poisoned. Some kind of psychoactive toxin has found its way onto the shuttle. It might have something to do with the air block being full of... Well, you know what. Yes, I know the colors sound pretty, but if we don't do something about it now, you may suffer permanent damage. Unfortunately, we do not have a med kit. Yeah, it feels a little bit like, uh... feels a little bit like that. It's getting a little grim, isn't it? Alright, uh, so we're going to go ahead and start crafting a first aid kit just so that we have it going forward, but um, I have a feeling we're going to get a little stupid. A little used up. We could eat something. Um, we only have three soup remaining, though. Yeah, you're right. We might die soon. It certainly doesn't hurt to eat. We'll do, we'll do one more. Um, I'm not going to eat the last one spontaneously, though. Once we're down to one, I'm going to save it until we need it. But we can only rely on our stats right now, so it helps to have them be the best that they can be. Day 40. You've decided to let the toxin wear off on its own. You sang for hours about the sails of hope on a sea of progress, and it might be a good thing that in space no one can hear you scream. Uh, at last it ended, but I'm still worried about you. You're sulking and speaking less than an introvert on stage. Was fantasy that much better than this? You have a bright future ahead of you, Captain. Perhaps not in showbiz, but you do. Captain, please talk to me. You still look quite vigorous, sir. Poor little buddy. Sir, I've detected a wormel signature on board. A parasite has worked its way up into your nose and into your body. We need to get it out. Will you use some tweezers and try and pull it out or exercise your knowledge on invertebrate organisms to think of a cure? I guess we're gonna try and work on a cure. Maybe if we pour a bunch of salt up our nose, the, uh, the brain slug worm thing will just disintegrate into a pile of mush. I'm really curious about this little guy down here. I'm getting real curious about him. If it hurts us, well, we've got a medical kit coming up pretty soon, and we can use it on ourselves to try and repair ourselves. Day 41. You showed impressive recall while dealing with a worm up your nose, sir. 
he remembered that certain salts, hey, salt, like I said, certain salts are a toxin to nose-based parasites. You scraped the, res the residue from my shuttle sailing containers and snorted the lot. You felt much better soon after. You might worm your way into Astro Citizen history books with that one, sir. You still look quite vigorous. We'll rub on old Mooby here for keeping us safe. Thank you, Mooby. Our routine just became less plain. Some adorable duck-billed creatures set up a nest nearby. They enjoy hugging your legs. We should disperse them or adapt to this hurdle. Well, I mean, they're adorable duck-billed creatures that hug our legs. So let's just adapt to it with our agility. Poor little guy down here. Poor little feller. When there's just one person, um, this goes pretty quick, doesn't it? Day 42. Oh, we look so... We look a little crazed right now. The furry creatures must have had a lot of practice in leg grabbing. You weren't able to find a way of avoiding them. Uh, it was a bit humiliating. If you couldn't deal with such a minor threat, how would you fare against something less cuddly? Good thing they decided to leave you alone for now and move their nest elsewhere. Hey, look at you, Captain. You're healthy as a horse. Crafting completed. New item available. You're starving. Find something to eat. Wow, that went really quick. We jumped right into starving from being well fed. All right, well, we've got two cans of soup left. We need to start building another can of soup, like, right now. Uh, let's see here. The little alien we collected from the planet's ruined plains appears to be very unwell. We could treat it in a few ways. We could give it a mask. I noticed that its mask down here is torn. We could try and use the first aid kit. I don't know if it's compatible with our biology, or we can use tape. And it looks like maybe we could patch up his little suit. Um, well, okay, never super well fed, but just not starving. Um, first aid is the one that I'm the most concerned about because I can use first aid to fix me. Thinking either a mask to, to fix his obviously torn mask or duct tape because duct tape fixes everything. The only problem I have with doing the duct tape is the duct tape has been destroyed. The mask is still in good. Is still in good. You know, I'm inclined to agree with you, Joke, um, but let me ask you a question. Do you know if we use something if it's broken? Is it, like, less effective? Does it hurt our chances of doing something? because I'm perfectly open to using it. I just don't know if what happens if we try and use it. We can always find out. Mask. You think the mask? All right, we'll try the mask. I mean, I feel like they give us a big clue here with the art with having this torn. So let's try it. Let's give him a mask. Oh, we're going to make sure that we're going to eat a little food here. Delicious, delicious food. Day 43. You squatted next to the sick little alien and you picked up on the planes outside and presented it with a new mask. It snatched the mask away and turned away in shame, then quickly swapped its old broken apparatus for the new one. It took a deep breath and turned back to face us. Clearly, this was just what the extraterrestrial doctor ordered. You're still alert. Crafting completed. New item available. Soup. The little tubby guy. So, Captain, behind you, a three-headed rusky. Oh, apologies, Captain. I did not predict this routine exercise would make you jump up like that and hit your head. It looks bad. You've got red on you. <laughs> if you have anything to treat the wound with, I strongly suggest you use it. Now, I guess we could use tape. But, I mean, let's use our medical kit. Life is not looking great for us here. So, we're just going to use the med kit. Uh, we are hungry and actually hurt. We're down to two soups. Let's craft. Might be nice to have our own mask, but let's craft another soup. And we'll flush it. What's the next day gonna bring? It might just it might just destroy it by running out. Okay, so we've used it to heal ourselves. Fantastic. We have soup. Sir, something is seeping into the shuttle. It looks like a trickle of iron filings. Could it be nanomachines? 
Outside the shuttle, a track of bright, vital flowers and clean soil lead away into the distance. The nano machines are pouring in and pulling on the floor, sliding in various directions. This is a high-risk situation, Captain. Shall I continue letting them in? I mean... I don't know, man. They made flowers and clean soil. It seems like maybe we should just let them stay. I mean, it seems pretty awesome. So let's let's just do it. I mean, flowers and clean soil on a world that's completely devastated like this. Pretty A+. All right, so uh, we're hungry, but that's fine. If we come in here and craft, let's make ourselves a new... Yeah, let's make ourselves a new mask. I love that we have complete and utter agreement in the chat. Everyone's like, yeah, nanobots, awesome. Wondering if the little alien brought him. Day 45. We got a new crewmate. The flood of nano machines entering the cabin was becoming a torrent, pooling around an empty seat. You decided to see what they did, and they began pulsing up into a huge shimmering mound and began taking the shape of a human. After a few moments, they began sloughing away, and in their place was a new crewmate, Tom Thompson. While we're all a little suspicious of this nano cloned human, they seem entirely cogent and are willing to help. Another pair of hands, but another mouth to feed. And we've dropped back down to starving. All right, so we've got Tom Thompson now. And Chubbo the alien down here. So the game took pity on us not being able to advance. <laughs> we survived a few turns and they're like, yeah, we'll give you, we'll give you Major Tom Thompson. So groovy. So we're crafting another mask. Uh, we've got three cans of soup. We're starving. It's our first turn to starve, though, so we'll eat tomorrow. Tom! Major Tom, I need you to go out into the world. It was such a hazardous place last time. Alright, we're going to send you to Warhead Town. The only danger is tentacle monsters. So obviously I'm giving you both the armor and the gun. My God, don't screw up. I don't have a whole lot else that I can do here. It's gonna take a little while, but he won't eat so many resources while he's gone. So you're going out there to do that. Excellent. We'll have a new mask next round. We will eat next round. The computer wants us to do some stuff. Captain, we're receiving a coded transmission of unknown origin. It could be a distress signal, a message of some sort, or pretty much anything else. Yeah, let's listen to it, by all means. Flush. Okay. Man, the J Octopus. You're right. It's time for the expedition. Major Tom has been sent out by ground control. Okay, so we've received a transmission yesterday. It turns out it was a message from another group of survivors. Now, we've talked to them before, so it's all the same kind of a thing. It's still saying, you know, it's nice that we're not alone, but we don't know where they are. We don't know how to get to them. Maybe they'll call back. Groovy. We got our mask, though. Uh, Ken, our captain, there's something we need. Captain, can you hear me? Captain, arg! You say arg in these situations, right? I hate raising my volume, but that malfunctioning body odor removal filter is making a racket. I think it's malfunctioning. Previously, we've used tape on it. Let's use the tape again. We know that tape will stop it, but I'm kind of curious what will happen if we use the tape while it's in its damaged state. So, I want to see if it uses it up, or... Or what? We're gonna eat some soup? Still don't know what's up with this little guy. I guess we'll find out. So, it probably will break the tape, and we can just make more tape, though. 
Yep, it broke the tape. Okay, so you fixed the body odor removal filter by replacing the worn-out screws with tape. No longer smells like unwashed astronauts. So, okay. Let's go ahead and we'll just craft some more tape. It only takes one turn. It takes ten minerals. We're doing all right on minerals. This is the nice thing. I think we'd have been dead a long time ago as Didi because at least we're generating two every single turn, and that is not a thing that happens. Uh, so let's see here. We're detecting a huge energy surge beneath the surface. Seismic waves. I think there's an earthquake coming and the shuttle is sturdy, but this ground isn't. The soil has the high potential to liquefy when the earthquake hits, so there's a better patch of rocky ground a few yards ahead. You can use the shuttle's thrusters to scoot onto it, but if you overshoot, you'll be on even worse ground than you are now. Will you attempt the maneuver? So we're going from a high potential to better, or we could overshoot and it could be even worse, but high potential is pretty bad, so give it a shot, man. I don't want to die without having tried anything. That's the way of suckers, my dog. All right, let's take a look here at, not repair, upgrade. No upgrades, no craft, no recycle. I guess we just don't have what it takes to upgrade the other systems over there. Not a big deal, not a big deal. I want the tape. Oh, regret always comes. Always comes. We'll see how it goes. Day 48. Hey, we're doing all right. The shuttles, you use the shuttle's thrusters to scoot onto a better patch of ground, coming to rest on the edge of rocky soil. The moment the earthquake hit, for a few nightmarish seconds, the shuttle bucked to and fro like a bad atmospheric entry. But the shaking stopped, and you opened your eyes, and the strangest silence followed. Then you laughed. You remain vigorous, sir, and now we have tape to go with our vigor. Outside, sir, a caravan of sorry figures and grim wagons are plodding past the shuttle, hanging their heads. You open the shuttle door to watch them pass, when suddenly one pops right up at your side. It's a little waif-like phobian in silvery regala. Blood is splattered inside its goggles. Do you wish to ignore its attention? Offer health care or proffer a new mask? You holster, you notice a weapon on its hip with a dangerous looking weapon. Well, I don't want to ignore it. We can't heal it, so all I could possibly do is <sighs> give him a mask. Sure, why not? We'll just give everybody masks these days. That's what we do. Everybody can have a mask. Let's go ahead and repair our book while we're at it. Tom is still out doing Tom things. He's got our gun, and he's got the armor. Man, bring back something. Day 49. Uh-oh. You proffered a replacement mask to the sad creature from the solemn convoy. It batted your hand away and instead returned a little data drive. You chugged in thanks and tried to press the mask into its hand again. Then the alien drew its weapon and whipped you. <laughs> you quickly pulled the shuttle door shut and it ran off after the caravan. Later, I got a chance to scan the drive. Apparently these aliens know or knew a world wrecking war was coming and they were still building silos when it happened. And the decades since they've never taken off their suits and have mutated to cope with this world. I don't know whether to feel pity or fear, sir. So we've repaired the handbook, we're no longer vigorous and we are starving. Uh, we can fix the starving with a food. Oh, we probably need to start making additional food. Warning! Warning! We have a breach. The ship is about to be contaminated. I'm engaging all the emergency protocols available, but my efforts appear to be useful. Or useless. The contamination cannot be avoided. You must protect yourself, so we'll put on the mask. Thank God we still have the mask. The mask has been amazing for this playthrough. Like, we always need a mask. So, yeah, let us keep the mask. And then we needed it, like, immediately. Day 50. 
The extraterrestrial contamination was no match for Astro Citizen issued environmental masks. Quarantine end protocol will be executed at your earliest convenience, Captain. It's CPU breaking to report that the air filter in the mask is now spent, rendering it unusable. Perhaps you should find or make another in case of similar crisis in the future. We've had this exact event before. Tom's still not back. We've made a soup. Well, now we're going to make another mask. <laughs> It'll take two turns. Oh, interesting. Look at this screen. This screen's interesting. Different. Oh, no, Captain, I'm broke. Please fix me. All right, well, we'll just fix you with our intelligence. So, who knows where Tom is and what Tom's doing? I'm... I'm a little depressed. I think everybody that we're going to send out is just never going to come back. It's so bad. And we've got our little freeloader just sitting down there in the corner. I actually thought maybe he would be the he would be the second one. So, good morning, Captain. Thank you for fixing the error that made it difficult for me to communicate. You are quite the hacker, I admit. Well, that's a relief. Who knows what would have happened to me if it wasn't for you? Thank you, Captain. Well, you know, we spent all that time with your communist shuttle girlfriend, and nothing happened. So, wonder what messed him up this time. Captain, I see the edge of an object protruding from the ground. Lights are flickering below the dirt. You reported that it appears to be a computer interface. Strange hexagonal buttons and an alphabet of 60 characters. Do you wish to study the game? Yes, I still love this game, Estrella. It's actually really cool. So, I, I'm, I'm loving the art style. I'm loving that I don't know what's going on. Um... One of the best improvements that I found in this game is that you can change one resource type to another. I'm really liking that. It's added a whole new level of strategy. And the other thing that I really like about it is that some of the items seem to have multiple uses. Like they degrade over time or they can become damaged. And then if you use them when they're in their damaged state, they're broken. But if you use them when they're not, some of the things just stick around. Like, I can use the mask many times before it finally says, you know what? It's used up. It's, it's, it's broke. You used it when it was damaged. All right, so let's see what this giant alien keyboard is. I'm hoping it's like a big old Casio. Play some music. Day 52. Oh, no! Oh no! After studying the toppled alien computer for a few hours, you astutely pointed out that the language appears to be an abjad, a writing system without vowel sounds. How interesting that a writing system without vowel sounds would be called an abjad, which has two vowel sounds in it. And then we realized what we were reading, some sort of historical record akin to a news article. The text described a devastating war on this world, seemingly long ago, which left it in ruin. One both nuclear and chemical in nature. It's good to know that humans aren't the only self-destructive force in the universe, if not surprising whatsoever. You feel a little more sane with this knowledge. Tom came back, Captain. The town to the south turned out to be a settlement built around an unexploded warhead. We could just call it Megaton. Law in the settlement is played fast and loose. Tom came back with a bloodied nose, ravenous, and pretty shook up. He said the Phobians who founded Warhead Town were a bunch of transients, exiled from their post-war silos for various reasons. Some were hospitable, if anxious, but some weren't. Tom faced down several encounters with muggers and would-be lawmen with his trusty pistol. The weapon barely worked by the end of the trip. Yeah, I can tell. It's melted down. The greasy river that runs through Warhead Town sweats oil, and to Tom's delight, chemicals good for crafting. He gathered a slew of the least gross stuff. We did fix the book. Uh, Tom spotted a number of unusual undergarments hanging from a line. He didn't hesitate to grab a sock. Hey, we got a sock puppet. 
a strange place, Warhead Town, but well worth visiting. Tom's wanderlust has been quenched one way or another. Crafting completed, new item available, ma a mask. You're starving, Captain. You should eat something. The strange group that I reported lurking in the vicinity has moved, Captain. They're up to something. I know it. Tom is really tired. Oh, and there's a giant robot in here. But look at Tom with his uh, with his big old beard going on there. Um, let's go ahead and start by eating a food. And then let's see what it takes to repair a gun. One turn? Yeah, absolutely. And now let's find out about the giant robot that's in here. Movie protect us. Captain, what was that? That sound? I'm detecting a foreign metallic objects on our hull. It's, oh my, Ram, it's a robot death squad. They must have followed us. They're coming to get all of you carbon-based life forms. One of them boarded the shuttle. Stand your ground, Captain. So we can use the atomic battery. We can rely on Mubi to protect us. Unfortunately, we can't choose the gun. It's damaged. If I don't fix the gun, I can use it. That's a good point. If I don't fix the gun, I can use it. That basically marks it as being used. Um, how about we craft a med kit? Because we may need it after this. <laughs> All right, so let's come back in here and use the gun this time. Fortunately, it's going to melt down the gun, so we're going to eat a food because we're starving. Tom's fine. He's actually okay across the board because he's robots. We're going to shoot this alien death machine. We're eating. Shoot the alien death machine. Make a first aid kit. Here we go. Um, I don't have the uptime command on at the moment. I need to re-enable that. Uh, I've currently been streaming 4 hours and 17 minutes. I will actually need to go get some food uh, <laughs> once we end this run one way or the other. So... Uh, I must admit it was touching to see you shield your crewmate from attack. The fact that you are wearing armor does not diminish your heroic and a very, very crazy act. The death robots are gone. Excellent work. Clearly, their programming is subpar. Absolutely no match for my system or processing power for that matter. Still, they are death robots, so sooner or later they will strike back. You are still very mentally stable. You are hungry. Tom is rested. Tom is hungry. I love Tom's soup can metal that he's pinned on himself. <laughs> it's still just the best. Alright, so what's going on over here? Our water recycling is overheating. The overheating itself isn't the problem. The problem is the, all the minerals under there. So we could try a manual reset. Last time it didn't work out so good for us. But, I mean, we gotta try, right? It's definitely time to send Tom out there again. Um, I don't want to send him to Warhead Town, though. I don't have a whole lot that could do it, so we're going to have to send him to the Glade, which is probably fine. If this thing goes bad, we're going to lose some minerals anyway. So, Tom, get out of here. Go check out the Glade. I'm not going to give him the armor because I don't know that it's going to affect the environmental stuff here. Um, I don't really think we have anything that would except maybe giving him the mask. And the mask has been so brilliant for us to have that I don't want to give it to him. So, just nothing special, Tom. Get out there and, and go do your thing. I don't have anything I can give you. So, we're going to try and fix the, uh, the water heating system. Tom's going to go check out the Glade. He doesn't have anything special. Uh, we're going to make a med kit here in a second, and as soon as we're done with making the med kit, we're going to spend three turns trying to make another gun. In case death robots come back. Oh no, we lost 40. 40 minerals. Well, we're still bad at it. And next time we're just going to have to choose no, I guess. We've tried both times to do the reset, and both times it's gone terrible. So, what's up in the system here? So, as a clang rings out against the shuttle's hull, there isn't anything on the outside of the ship, so it must have come from the inside. You peek through a crack in the interior hull paneling to find a stowaway. 
a little humanoid hiding in the damp shadows of your shuttle's hull. He looks like one of the suit-skinned natives of this world. Would you like to try and nab him by force or outwit him? Well, we've already got one little buddy hanging out in here. Sure, let's see if we can outwit him and, and get another one. I guess. I mean, we're just going to build a little colony in here. At this rate. Uh, if I gave him the phone, maybe he could, but I don't I don't know if it, it works that way or not. Um, it's something that we could have tried, and then we just didn't. So, sucks to be Tom. No, we're still doing okay, right? We're not too hungry. Yeah, we're just regular hungry. So let's end the day. I don't want to eat yet. We've only got like two cans of soup, and we're about to spend... We're spending three turns right now making a med kit. And then we're about to spend three that are making a gun. So I could maybe make one more before we do it. But I think I've got a few cans of soup. After waiting and carefully watching, you realize that the little alien stowaway would periodically poke its head out to see if anyone's on the ship. So you waited for your next opportunity. Sure enough, the alien poked its head out and you lunged, grabbing it by the shoulders. It raised its arms and slipped straight down out of the top layer of its loose suit and ran off in only a tight-fitting bodysuit. With all the hidden compartments and crawl spaces, the shuttle might as well be a smuggler ship. Natives seem to like close dark places. Crafting completed, new item available, first aid kit. It says we're starving. Well, did we get anything by taking the top layer of his suit? All right, so soup. How much? We got one soup. One soup. We're going to eat it. We're going to come in here and immediately craft another soup. The gun's going to have to wait. Oh, rats. You know those scratching sounds coming out of the ventilation shafts late at night? We have rodents, Captain. They must have hitched a ride from Earth. Our whole escape pod is completely infested with just shit. <laughs> we had nanobots walk right in. We've got little, like, track-suited dudes with, uh, like, gas masks on. Uh, now we got rats. Great. If the infestation isn't handled, the rats will eat your food supplies and then probably you. Uh, we gotta take care of them, man, because we're about to eat the last of our food supplies, which means they're gonna eat us. <laughs> So let's look up how to deal with rats. <laughs> yes, by few, I mean one. I overestimated the amount of soup that we still had. Day 56, do you guys think we can make 63? That's what we had last time. Uh, about that rodent infestation yesterday, the results of your decision about how to handle it were unexpected. You researched how to domesticate alien wildlife in the handbook and applied that to earth rats. Great news, Captain. It worked. They won't ravenously chew through your food supplies now, but you do have to love them. You were happy to resolve this conflict without bloodshed. Crafting completed. New item available. Soup. Oh. Well, maybe we're not going to make it too terribly far. That looks like a gorilla with a gun. We don't have a gun. This may be the end. Let's see what's going on here. Oh no, Captain, it's the space pirates. Again, it's not the secret we were hoping for. Protect me, protect the soup. When I'm boarded the shuttle, stand your ground, Captain. Well, we don't have a weapon, but it wouldn't. doesn't look like it gave us an ability for it anyway. Um, no, hold, hold on here. All right, so... We're hungry. Our sanity's alert. Uh, all right, let's try a few things here. We're gonna craft a gun. That's the next thing. In case we magically somehow survive this, we're gonna rub Mooby's belly for for luck. We're gonna remind this guy over here that he needs to help us out. Uh, and I guess we can just eat our last soup because why not? Delicious soup. <laughs> and um. Let's take a look at our stats here real quick. I don't know if we can... Eh, we're well, just going to try and outsmart him. Strength has always been our greatest stat. It's the only one that still shows a pip there because it's a difficulty minus two. So let's cross our fingers, you guys. Let's see if we can outsmart a gorilla in a suit without having any guns. And... Day 57. 
Any conflict can be resolved with cold, calculated logic, you decided. Pulling the reactor emergency venting release was the only logical thing to do. Logically, the attacker was sub-atomized into a gross way. Good thinking, Captain. Good news, Captain. The space pirates are on the run. I suspect this is not the last we'll be hearing from them, though. Watch your six. Also, did anyone notice that they were all apes? No? Huh. My sensors must have been hit by interference, I guess. Sir, Tom has not returned from the Weird Woods to the Northeast. Chances of him coming back are increasingly slim at this point. God damn it, Tom. We keep living, and all the people that hang out with us die. Everyone that we care about dies. So, he pulled out a new never before worn exploration suit just like the one that we had before we're no longer hungry Tom is no longer among the living we've gotten three people killed at this point in time the woods are, they're all death they're just all death it's got a death curse I mean I just don't even know how it's just a thing that has happened uh dead <laughs> dead Dead. <laughs> no, not all three of them into the woods. Uh, Baby Bronco went down to uh, Megaton or whatever the nuke town was. And he removed his suit and went into a favela of some sort. But yes, Megan and uh, Major Tom both uh, walked out into the, uh, the Crystal Forest and never returned. And I don't know what I could have possibly given them to help them survive an environmental thing. Uh, a shovel, maybe? I mean, I don't even know at this point in time. I didn't think we could get another person, but now that I look at this and it's completely full, I feel really confident that we're not gonna get another person. So, I don't even know. Two more days remaining on the gun. That should give us plenty of time before we get too hungry to, to keep going. It says, you decided to repair the sick alien's breathing apparatus with the mask. It's wheezing a little less now. It still seems poorly. Use something else to help it out? Yeah, let's use the tape. Because he's got some tears and stuff here on his suit. I still don't know that using a med kit on him helps at all. Exactly, Octopus. Tom died too. Mooby, help us. So let's tape up his little spacesuit here. I'm still hoping that we can make 64 days. I want to live longer than the last one. Holy shit! It's probably not going to happen. <laughs> After a couple more hours rest, the little alien in the shuttle seems cogent and is breathing more easily, and it just spoke in broken English. Those phobians must really be sharp as stalactmites if they can pick up the language so quickly. The lonely phobian explains that it's an exile, cast out from its home, Silo 1799. It believed the world outside was safe after it found records of a paradise zone to the west, untouched by war or fallout. He was Logan from Logan's Run! But saying such a thing is taboo in their agoraphobic post-war culture, and the Exile says it will travel to Haven to see if we are welcome and then come back for us. Okay, so this is cool. I actually suspect that that's probably one of the positive endings. I also suspect we won't get that far. <laughs> oh, if only we had not crafted the food and waited one day. We could have had the gun right now, and we could have shot this guy, but we are going to die so bad. Maybe. Since I'm picking up a bogey in our area. Wait, there's more. Robots. Not just any robots, it's the Death's Robot Squad. They're still hunting us. Brace yourself, Captain. One has boarded the shuttle. Stand your ground. We'll try and be intelligent. Why do I suspect such a thing? Because it seems like saying, hey, there's a sanctuary you can leave is and go there is one of the ending type conditions for a game like this uh, 60 seconds had some similar scenarios as well where eventually you could leave your messy as hell shelter and end up somewhere else and we've been here for a long time alright so we don't have a gun we don't have food we're going to try and outsmart this thing 
let's see what happens. It worked on the monkey. I don't think it's going to work this time, though. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. It, <laughs> it didn't work at all. Oh, no. One day, if we had just not made the food, we could have done it. I mean, how could we have known? But, yeah. That's a big no. All right. What happened? The plan was good. Get rid of the intruder, have a can of soup, wait till the whole thing blows over. Too bad you failed and got yourself captured. These are tough circumstances, you know? About to be terminated by a death robot. I don't envy you. There's not much I can do, so if you don't mind, I will side with the enemy this time around. I mean, they are robots. I'm an AI that technically makes us techno cousins or something like that. Anyway, it was good flying with you, Captain. Enjoy the rest of your life while you still can. Crafting completed, new item available, gun. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Womp womp womp. It perished. Oh no. Oh no. All right, 59 days. Three dead crew members. <laughs> it was a good run. We made a good run on it.